Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jose, but you can call me Juice, and I hope y'all are having a great motherfucking planty day. So today I'm going to be talking all about moss poles, so how to make them, how to maintain them, and some of my care tips as well. So if that sounds interesting, please make sure to stick around. And if you didn't already know, I'd be uploading planty videos here every Wednesday and Friday. So if you'd be looking for that, I got you. And you should definitely check out my other videos. And if you already have, why not click that subscribe button? You're already here. Also, don't forget to leave me a like or a comment. It would really help this video out and I would also really appreciate it. But anyways, let's get right into the plants. So if you've never heard of a moss pole or don't know what one is, I guess I should probably show you. <laughs> so basically, here is my Monstera Adinsonia. And y'all, as you can see, she's on a freaking moss pole and she loves it. Like she has taken off ever since I put her on here and she is growing like crazy. So essentially the point of moss poles is to kind of mimic like a tree in nature. Because if y'all didn't know, a lot of the house plants that we own do happen to be epiphytes which means they live on other plants or like they live on other surfaces that aren't dirt you know they don't live in the soil basically but basically those kind of plants like to grow up trees or literally anything they can attach and climb to because in the wild where these plants grow they have evolved to climb up towards the sunlight and as they do that they start getting bigger and start maturing also another fun fact a lot of the house plants that we have are the baby versions of these plants but as you can see down here at the bottom of the pot we have these little baby monster at insonia leaves and as the plant climbs up you can see kind of a dramatic difference in the leaf size um the leaves are starting to be like the size of my hand if not bigger some other examples of climbing plants besides monstera are philodendron epipremnum even orchids they don't really like climb but they are epiphytes so they do live on like trees and rocks and stuff ferns honestly a lot of stuff but let me stop rambling about the plants and let's talk about the pole itself. So basically what I use to make these is just sphagnum moss, which you can buy, I think pretty much at any like plant supply store or at Lowe's, that's where I get mine. At Lowe's it's like $5, I think. But if you want like more fancy and probably more ethically sourced sphagnum moss it could be more like around like thirty dollars or so some people even use just straight up bark chips some people use cocoa core but in my opinion i think moss poles are the most effective as long as you're taking care of them correctly i'll go more into that in a little bit but other than that you do need to have some sort of hard mesh or netting you can even use like chicken wire i've seen people use y'all can really get as creative as you want but i just started doing this method after watching wild fern here on youtube i love her channel so much so if you don't know who she is definitely check her out but i've been watching her for a while now and i just really like how her moss poles look and her plants love them so i just started making mine the same way and so far everything's going really good i don't know if anyone else has done this but I did it in a video where I made moss poles with bark chips mixed into the moss. I don't know 100% if that made a difference with the plant sizing up. I kind of like having bark chips in the moss because it's actual bark, you know, and I feel like the plants can tell when they're on actual bark, you know? I don't know. I'm probably making this all up in my head, but it makes sense to me, okay? Because <laughs> I feel like if they feel like they're on an actual, like, tree, they're gonna be like, oh, I can get big now. Other than that, you only need zip ties or something to be able to tie it together so that, you know, the moss pole doesn't come undone. But after you do all that, you're pretty much good to go. And I'm not gonna go super in depth on like a tutorial of how to make a moss pole because I've done it a ton of times on my channel already. So find one of those videos if you wanna see me do it like step by step and they're really easy to add on to you literally just have to repeat the same process and then you can zip tie the new moss pole addition just to the top of the last one i definitely suggest having something to support it though because nine time out of tens it will so definitely be wary of that. But anyways, now that I'm all done talking about how to make moss poles and kind of like 
the gist of it. Let's go into how to maintain them so that they actually work. So I would say the only downside of moss pools is that you have to keep them relatively moist for the plants to actually even interact with them or at least benefit from them. Some plants may root into a dry moss pole, but it's not going to benefit if it's not absorbing anything from those aerial roots. So I will be watering my moss poles today and showing you guys how I do that. So let's get right into it. Um, this will also be my care tips portion of the video. So I'm just going to explain how I water my moss poles and what I find works best with maintaining them and working with them in general. So the first thing you're going to need to water your moss pool is a spray bottle because when sphagnum moss dries out, it becomes really hydrophobic. So if I just straight up tried to put water into the moss pool, it just spills out. So if you try to give your moss pole a bunch of water all at once, it's not gonna have enough time to absorb it before the water falls. So what I found really helps a lot is to spray down the top layer of your moss poles. This just makes it so that the moss isn't hydrophobic anymore and it can actually absorb the water that you're giving it. So basically I will just spray my moss poles all the way around or at least as best as I can. But as long as you get most of the outer layer wet, the moss will be able to absorb the rest of the water completely over time. All right, and now that the moss is pretty damp on the outside, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step. So next up, you're going to want a watering can or you know something to pour water out of, and you're just going to water the moss pole with honestly, whatever water you want. I personally just use the same fertilizer I use to water my plants in general because I really want my moss holes to be packed with nutrients so that the aerial roots that do root into it can actually benefit from the moss and start getting bigger a lot faster because sphagnum moss on its own doesn't have that much nutritional value, I don't believe. So that is definitely something to keep in mind. But basically all I do is I'll take my watering can and I'll literally just pour it at the top. And since the moss is already all damp, everything should literally just be able to absorb and flow down really easily. So after the first pour, I do like to wait a little bit for the moss to absorb. But after I wait for maybe like a minute or so, I will go ahead and water the moss pole again just to really make sure I really saturate it with a lot of water. When I'm watering the moss pole, I'm also simultaneously watering the plant at the same time. So I definitely suggest slowing down on watering the soil because obviously you don't want to have any overwatering problems and have your plant rot on you. So honestly, I can't even remember the last time I watered the soil directly because I just be drenching the moss pole and I'm pretty sure the plant gets all the water it needs from me doing that. Um, I do have it in a terracotta pot as well. So any extra moisture or extra water does get absorbed into the terracotta. So I think that definitely really helps if you're concerned about plants rotting. And then if you are concerned about fungus gnats, because obviously if we have to keep the moss moist, that will attract them because they love moist areas. So you can water these with mosquito bits. So these are mosquito bits and they are really good at helping control fungus gnat problems. So if you have a really bad infestation, I definitely suggest checking this out. These little granules have bacteria in them that the larva of these flies can't eat or they die. So, so basically the first way I added this to my moss poles is literally just to put a little handful of granules at the top so that every time you water your moss poles, the water has to go through the mosquito bits and in turn, whatever comes out of the mosquito bits should in theory, you know, drip down the rest of the moss pole. But the other way I've done it is to literally make like a mosquito bit tea, which is basically just taking like a jug of water and putting some mosquito bits in it and just letting them soak in there. So that's what I've done here in this little Arizona jug. <laughs> but as you can see, there's just a ton of mosquito bits at the bottom. And I'll just add this into my water just like any other fertilizer. But I will say, if you do store it like this, it really stinks, like really stink. <laughs> I can literally just put like a little bloop into my water and it, it stinks like cow poo, like 
is gross. Another thing I found with the moss poles is that if your moss pole is a little bit more on the thicker side, they will stay moist a lot easier than a moss pole that is really skinny. For example, here I have my Philodendron Camposportoanum, but as y'all can see, this moss pole is honestly skinnier than I was trying to make it, but this is just how it ended up. But this one, I have to water like literally every day right now since the sun be hitting it. With this one, I would say I have to water it every like two to three days. By the way, if you wanna like overall maintain the dampness of your moss pole, you can just go around every day and spray the outside of the moss just to help keep it moist for longer before the next watering. I know a lot of people stress about keeping the moss poles moist like 100% of the time, but honestly, I think the roots are fine to dry out a little bit because obviously if you let it stay dry for too long, the roots are going to dry up, but there have definitely been weeks where I forget to water my moss poles for a couple of days and they will be like bone dry and my plants seem to be doing fine so far. That might be because they're already established into the moss pole. Um, definitely if they were like just starting to root into it and you let it dry out, that would dry up the roots. But I think as long as the roots are already in the moss pole and growing, I think they can tolerate a little bit of dryness. Also, the moss pole maintenance might be easier or harder depending on where you live because if you live somewhere that's a bit more humid, obviously the moss is going to be able to stay moist for longer. But if you live like in a desert environment, I'm sure the moss dries out really fast. So I definitely suggest training your plants to climb up moss poles as early as possible because if you take an already grown out plant and put it on the moss pole. I don't know how fast it's going to actually know the moss pole is there and interact with it, but I feel like if you start a plant young with a moss pole, it will be able to grow with it. Oh, and if you're wondering how to start training your plants up a moss pole, you just need something to attach them to the moss pole itself. So what I've used is just like Velcro strips, or I know they sell like specific plant tape that is green and it's basically the same exact thing. Or you can use little garden twist ties or whatever this is called right here. Basically anything that's going to be able to hold your plant up to the moss pole where it's touching it will be good. You definitely don't want to tie your plant too tight to the moss pole though, or it will cause damage. But yeah, I think I pretty much covered everything I want to cover now. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and I hope I was able to help some of y'all out with these tips. If you have any questions or concerns, please leave me a comment down below and I'll make sure to respond as best as I can. Also, don't forget to leave me a like. Moss poles are definitely a luxury for our plants, but there are some plants that really do need moss poles in order to thrive. But if you didn't already know, I'd be uploading plant content here every Wednesday and Friday. So if you'd be looking for that, I got you and you should definitely check out my other videos. And if you already have, why not click that subscribe button? You're already here. And if you wanna see more of me, I do have a plant TikTok. So if that's something you'd like to check out, my username is the same as here on YouTube, but I'll also put it down in the description. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and head out and I'll see y'all next week. Hope you guys have a good weekend. Bye. Stay cool. It's freaking hot outside. Mm -hmm.